Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense. Uh, we have a lot going on in the city. We have uh, elections coming up. We have uh, the political season uh, right on the cusp. And I'm here today uh, to have the privilege of being with Mark Diagostino, who's running for school committee in Ward 3. Mark, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me, Tom. Um, excited about running? Absolutely. There's a lot to do, and I'm very excited and uh, looking forward to getting to work for the students and families in Brockton. It's a lot of work running. Yes, it is. What, uh, <laughs> what are you doing out there on the campaign trail, and um, what are the people talking to you about? Um, we've been out knocking on doors, doing lit drops. Um, people have been, you know, talking about teacher layoffs and class size concerns. Um, so the, those are the main things that I'm hearing about is, is their concerns for class sizes because of the layoffs. Well, um, you have an addition to your family. Yes. Uh, yes. Tell us about uh, the baby who's now not so, so small but getting bigger every day. Yes. Um, we were blessed February 4th to have my, uh, our first um, Evan join us. And uh, he's, he's doing great, you know, seven months old now. And, uh, um, you know, he, he's different every day. Just watching him develop and um, change as it, I feel like every morning when we go to get him out of his crib, he's different somehow. How's mom? She's doing good. She's You're doing good. Putting up with you. Now she has two babies to put up with. <laughs> <laughs> So um, you helping out at home with uh, Evan? Of course, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, we uh, we really are a team, my wife and I, and you know that's that's how it should be. Tell us, uh, tell the the viewers who may not be too familiar with you about your background and uh, your roots to Brockton. Sure. Um, so my family's been in in Brockton uh, in one way or another since the the late 1950s. When my grandparents moved here, um, and uh, you know my father's a graduate of Brockton High School. Um, we've had a business here in the city for nearly 30 years um, that my father started, and now I run. Um, and uh, my Insurance? Yep. 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 Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, I, I attended the, the Hancock School at one point, as well as the Kennedy School. Um, and uh, so that's also... Thrown out of one and the other. E exactly. Exactly. They just kind of back around until somebody felt bad for me. <laughs> Um, and uh, uh, so, it, it did you go to junior high here? I, I did not. No, my parents had unfortunately decided to uh, move out of the city. Oh. Um, and um, then, um, when I got out of college, I decided to move back to the city. Um, you know, Brockton always felt like home to me. And hmm. um, well, so, so you're committed. Yeah, yeah. And and so many, you know, people you know move out and don't come back, but right. You chose back, to yeah. come back and make the part, become part of the community. Right. And when my wife and I got married, we decided to stay here and lay down roots and buy a home. And, uh, That's great. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously with the addition, you certainly ha now have uh, an interest to make sure that the schools uh, are competent and run well because someday uh, Evan's going to be obviously attending. Absolutely. Um, you know, I know that the policies that are being put in place now and the decisions that are being made now um, are going to, you know, they'll, many of them take time to take effect and so by the time Evan um, becomes of age to go to school, uh, we'll start to see a lot of those policies and decisions taking their effect. Um, so it, it makes it uh, a lot more personal for me to, uh, you know, having some skin in the game, I, I guess you could say, uh, make sure that um, I, the things I'm doing are uh, right for you know all of the kids in Brockton, but even my own son, who's going to be affected by them. Yeah. Um, if someone said to you, um, why uh, why school committee? Why not you know counselor or counselor at large? You know, what do you say? I, I think school committee is the most important job in the city. Um, our kids are the future of of our city, and uh, providing them a top notch quality education is. Uh, not, not a dig at the city council, they have an important job, so does the mayor, but um, I just feel like uh, right now for me, um, this is the most important job that I could be doing in the city. Oh, that's great. Um, I mean, I certainly share a lot of what you just said. Um, some of the things that we're, you know, concerned about with the school committee, obviously, is, you know, the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, the budget's been um, uh, in tough shape the last couple of years, these past couple of cycles. Um, and um, as you know, we um, last year had um, 
uh, to deal with in the midst of all of the budget. Uh, a charter school trying to come in, and now we're informed that uh, the charter school once again is uh, trying to come in. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I was actually very involved in the fight against the charter school. Um, there's uh, actually the um, Know to New Heights Facebook page that's out there. Um, me and uh, several other people were heavily involved in putting that up and getting the information up and trying to organize people. Um, and uh, uh, so I. I have a big problem with charter schools for a lot of reasons. Um, first of all, they take money away from our public school system and they're not overseen by the school committee. So where's the public oversight when you're getting public money? Um, well, that is an inherent um, contradiction, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. And I, I know they call themselves public schools. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, they're not. I, I know that officially they, I guess they are, but I don't I don't feel that they are because of that. Um, uh, also, as I started to look into charter schools more and research it more, you know, I started to find that some of these companies, uh, they look at it as a part of their investment portfolio. And that really bothered well, me. Well, it's a business. It, right. And that's, that, that's another problem with it. My son's education is not a part of somebody's investment portfolio. Um, that, that, that also disturbed me, that way of looking at it. Um, you know, so if it's not profitable to teach this particular um, class, they're not going to do it, even if it's necessary and appropriate for uh, student development. Um, those are some concerns that I have about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I certainly have uh, an issue with, uh, you know, a charter school coming into the city. Mm. Um, if the city of Brockton and the school system were failing our students, then I would have to say, you know what, we need to explore other options because it's not getting done. The right. kids are not being provided with an adequate education. Um, there um, needs to be uh, an, a successful alternative for kids to follow. But, you know, you and I both know here in Brockton, that's not the case. And mm -hmm. the problem with the way the charter schools are funded, and, you know, in particular, obviously, this situation, um, it's not going to enhance the Brockton Public Schools. It's going to potentially down the road when the um, funding gets uh, reduced, it's going to harm the public schools. It's not like a one-to-one -one reduction um, where you say, well, they're opening a charter school of, let's just say, 500 students. We close down a school of 500 students. It's a wash. It's a wash. Right. That's not the case. That's right. not the way they fund. That's not the way it's it, the the system works, and that's in lies the problem with a school system that you know you you know you've been paying attention. Um, you know we've just had some teacher layoffs because mm -hmm. of lack of funding. So you know when you don't have a one to one um, reduction, it's it's spread out throughout the system. You can't you know get rid of you know. 30 teachers at one school, five custodians, four custodians, you know, a, para, a staff, a parent. It's, it's, it's all dispersed throughout the district. And, um, you know, you still have basically the same number of expenses mm -hmm. with less funding to provide for those expenses. And, um, you know, the charter school does not take um, across the board the same percentage of students with different issues. It's not like, right. you know, they're going to take, um, you know, 13 percent special needs children. You know, 13 percent is somewhere where we have our special needs population. Right. Uh, they're not going to take, um, you know, 60 some odd percent, um, you know, of, uh, you know, English language learners. They're not, you know, I'm sorry, 30 some odd percent of English language. You know what I mean? They're not going to take the same percentages of all the student needs. I mean, right. um, so again, what does it do? Well, it leaves in the wake the Brockton Public Schools to have to deal with these important issues with, you know, less. less I mean, so, so, you know, the funding mechanism is flawed to me. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, if the state's going to invest in a charter school, well, it should do so. Um, and it should do so and implement some sort of formula that the district is somehow held harmless. Um, right. Or there's a real, you know, the district isn't going to suffer, um, you know, because of that.
peeling off of funding you know the needs and the resources that we still need to have in order to make the district function function should still remain in place and if the state really wants to do this then it should be separate funding and you know some sort of a more balanced um, deduction or approach so that the district isn't um, placed in a bad financial situation right and that's another issue why you brought that up I'm glad you did why do we have to I try to bring up interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> why would we have why do we need to defund our public education in favor of a charter school I, I don't understand why that would make sense and why well we I mean like I said if the, if the school system were failing you know if sure. you had, if you had like you know there are some states where you know like New Orleans right, right. that was a debacle you know so right. I mean I would, if I was the state, I would have basically said this district is incompetent. They don't know right. what they're doing. They're, there's corruption. Um, they don't we, have a choice. We, we don't have a choice, right? right. They, uh, we we got to do something different. But right. you, you and I both know, and you know, the citizens of Brockton certainly know Brockton's school system is, you know, considered the crown jewel of the city. I mean, you know, we there's so much good. There's so much activity. There's so many things that are offered that uh, students you know in our population don't have money for but yet aren't charged for and can c and can uh, contribute to and be a part of that you know it, it's 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 a way to a path for success i mean right that's that's the problem you know that's why i dig my heels in and they say you know some people say well you know you're not in favor of charter schools you know what are you crazy <laughs> and i say well you know, this isn't a community that needs a charter school. I, I'm not in favor of a charter school just for the sake of having a charter school. Well, that was the other thing is I started to feel like they, they wanted one here just because they wanted it here. There's no need for it here. Um, you know, we have a great school system. We have people, as you know, coming from other places to look at what we're doing and try and duplicate yeah. those why, results. Yeah, why are we getting such high awards, you know, when it comes to urban education? Why are we consistently, you know, one of the best urban um, centers, you know, for kids? You know, the high school gets all sorts of awards. Um, you, know, you go through our elementary schools, and, you know, levels of exposure to school. I mean, you have kids coming in, let's just say, uh, from Cape Verde, who are um, six years old. Mm -hmm. But yet, and, and technically they should be in the first grade, um, mm -hmm. but they're not up to speed in terms of where maybe a first grader, you know, who's been in the state or the city should be, you know. So it takes them more time to catch up. But at the end game, when they're through the Brockton Public Schools, at the end, you know, we have great graduation rates and we have good um, MCAS results. I mean, so, you know, how do we do it? Well, that's what it, why people come here to visit. They come here to see what they're doing, what we're doing, and, and, and try to duplicate that in their own communities. Yeah, so. you, the, high school, the high school gets a lot of accolades, and deservingly so. Right. But, it, it, you know, the elementary, the middle school, it all leads up to the success of the high school. So, right. you know, it's like you get the pat on the back at the end, but a lot went into getting those kids where they're at. And, you know, in those formative years in elementary, you know, like I said, if, if you have a child coming in that's not really a fifth grader, it's really a, a fifth grade age, but second grade education, why? Right. Because, you know... It's not until they get to the high school where they've caught up right. that the proof is in the pudding, you know. So exactly. And Brockton knows how to do it well, you know. Right. We've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. I mean, we, we've we been placed in this position, and we take on that obligation, and we get it done. Right. So. Yeah. And, you know, I, I really have enjoyed, in the past, I've met with the principals of the, you mentioned the elementary schools and how they play a role in getting the kids ready to um, get to where they are by high school. Well, I know you've been very out there. I mean, yeah. you, you, I've, I've talked to 
people at the Huntington School, which would be in you know your area, and they say, Absolutely. oh, yeah, Mark D'Agostino has been in here and talks to us. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Tell me about some of those conversations there. that you've had. And you know, one of the things that jumped out at me at one point, um, you know, when I first met with uh, uh, Principal Seba, she was the principal at the time, um, you know, we talked a lot about... Principal Seba McGuire. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, you know, we talked a lot about the success that they've had at the Huntington and the hard work that's gone into yeah. that. And I really respect the staff there because I, I and, and the parents and the, 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 the students, of course, that they're doing the work they're doing. I mean, it's really a community and they all really work together. Um, it was a big collaborative effort. It yeah. wasn't a top-down implementation. It was a collaboration that came from within the school and worked its way out and right. brought people in. That's right. why it was, it's so successful. Well, and I think that's, you're right, that's what made it successful. It wasn't, you will do it this way, it was let's right. all get together and figure out together. how to do this. Right. You know, and that's the best way to do any of this. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, you go into that school, I always laugh and I tell the kids when I go in there that you're the, you're, you know, the best dressed school around. They are piloting this year over at the Raymond uh, a, a student um, uniform, but, right. but, you know, the Huntington has it and you know when you go in there the kids look so neat and they look so cute right. um, it, it's it and it certainly takes out um, you know that the haves and the have-nots oh I have the expensive shirt or the expensive right. jeans or the expensive this I mean it really helps the parents out I think and right. brings people to sort of a you know a common place which it is how it should be you know so you take the haves and have-nots issue out of it and they're there in their uniforms, and they're ready to learn, and that's the focus. Yeah, and I mean, as you know, they have the, uh, they've worked hard to get the extended learning time grants so that their yep. day is a little bit longer, and mm -hmm. they can spend a little more time um, on certain areas, and um, right. that's shown progress. Yeah, that's, that's been a huge um, a part of their, their success that they've had there, I know, from from uh, you know, talking with the staff and administration there, that, that, that that's been instrumental in their ability to uh, improve results. Um, Kennedy is also in your sphere of influence. Yes, it is. Um, uh, you guys, you know, not too long ago, put up a nice um, playground for the yeah. kids. I think it's very well used from mm -hmm. what I can see whenever I go by there. Um, and it seems to be another nice learning environment. Um, do you go in and out of there once in a while, or uh, here and there? Uh, I've certainly been more engaged with the with the Huntington School, but um, I've tried to keep in touch with uh, Mr. Uh, Rogan, the yeah, principal. Mr. There. Rogan is the principal and, and was a teacher when I was at uh, uh, the Kennedy. I had him as a You're teacher. Showing your age, my friend. I, I know, I know. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, you know, and, and I remember him fondly as a teacher, and, and so I was actually uh, very happy when I learned that he was the principal there. Yeah. Another very well-run school in, in yeah. Ward 3. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was a student there myself at one time many years ago, long ago longer ago than I want to think about. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't bring up age. Yeah. But uh, the, uh, and, and, you know, I've, I've, I've noticed that even off school hours, the community around there uses that playground and, yeah. and gets to take advantage of that. So I think that's been a great thing for the, not just when school's in session, but that whole, you know, area around Kennedy. So, um, what do you um, see as you know the issues that you're uh, involved with, or concerned with, or have identified, or you know, where are you at with certain things? Sure. Um, you know, I've tried to um, pay attention to you know the uh, issues that are affecting education today. Um, and I know you come to some school committee meetings because yeah. I see you there. Yeah, absolutely. I go to school committee meetings. Are you the heckler in the back? Uh, only when you're talking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> you and uh, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I go to the school committee meetings and uh, um, I've also, in, in February, I went to the um, Federation, i got to make sure I get this right, Federation for Children with Special Needs Conference in Boston. Um, and uh, you know, got to learn a little bit about um, 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 you know students with uh, or children with special needs. That was an eye-opening experience, and I intend to attend it uh, again to continue learning about that. Um, additionally, 
Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk about Park and Common Core and uh, a moratorium on high stakes testing. Um, there was an opportunity to go to the State House in April and, uh, and lobby our uh, delegation. I participated in that um, as well. Um, and then uh, I was at a uh, forum at Bridgewater State that was held uh, where parents had the opportunity to speak about their experiences um, with the new curriculum and the assessment as well as um, administration and teachers from several districts around the state. Um, so I've certainly been out there and engaged in these issues to make sure that I, you know, I'm, I'm aware of, th of them. Um, you know, in, and on the testing thing, one of the, um, at the uh, Bridgewater State uh, Forum, one of the things that stuck out with me the most uh, was when um, some folks from Weston spoke. And uh, we're a lot like Weston. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what what stuck out with, with what they said is, geez, we're an affluent town. We had the money to go, or have the ability to go to our taxpayers and get the additional funding to do this. If they weren't, and they said this, if if we were an urban community that doesn't have that ability, we would be in trouble. You know, the implementing of this would be a struggle for us. Yeah. Um, because there's no funding that came with it, so. Where do you take it from? You're robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things that, um, as a school committee, we're very concerned with is, you know, and, you know, again, I don't need to tell you, is we live in a technological world, right. and we need to make sure that our students, you know, have access to computers and technology right. so that they're prepared to go forward. And, you know, a technology budget for a school system of 17,000 kids, roughly, it's a right. little less right now, but, you know, it's in that realm. Um, you know, it takes a lot, and Brockton's not a community that can afford to provide a one-to-one, -one, you know, computers exactly. for kids. Whereas, you know, Weston, Wellesley, Burlington, um, you know, and I'm sure all the other affluent communities, um, you know, can. Right. And, um, you know, the, the park testing, um, you know, part of that, um, the, the preferred method of providing the test is, you know, through computers. Um, and, you know, there's no way we could afford to test all the kids with computers. I mean, right. um, I mean, I, you know, uh, testing in general, I mean, it has to be relevant. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just test kids on areas of curriculum that are irrelevant, that don't make sense, that... Um, uh, you know, are things that aren't going to benefit them in the long run. I mean, there needs to be, you know, kids at a certain level have to, you know, should, ha there should be a standard what they need to know, you know, to right. move on to the next, you know. But that standard has to be, I think, um, you know, make sense, um, be truly beneficial. Um, and I'm not so sure yet, you know, uh, where Common Core and Park fit in, you know, totally. Um, right. I mean, I, I certainly <coughs> see the logic. But the question is, you know, does is is what's being implemented um, matching, you know, reason and logic, you know? Right. And at first, when I first looked at it, you know, uh, when I was really little, we had lived out of state and and come back, and and so having moved in two different states and and having the states be at different educational levels, I I at first looked at oh, geez, okay, I can understand wanting. You know, if you go from one state to the other, you're still doing the same work. And, and, and so early on, <coughs> I was a little more uh, open to it. But as I've looked into it a little further, and, you know, I've started, you start asking questions like, well, for example, Massachusetts, we're, we're the leader, and we're following everybody else. I, I don't know, that, that, that right, part of it. That's the concern. Right. You know, exactly. That's right. the concern. Everybody it's wants to catch us, and we're following them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we need to make sure, you know, the, the logic behind, you know, wanting people career ready um, mm -hmm. makes sense. But, you know, you know, are we watering down what we do? Now, right. educators that I speak to say, oh, no, absolutely not. You know, I, I guess time's going to tell. I right. mean, but... Um, you know, therein lies the question. And you don't get third grade back. You don't get fourth grade back. You don't get twelfth grade back. So, right. you know, you hope you're making the right decisions. Um, you know, what concerns me um, is, you know, kids from Europe, other countries, 
they speak two, three, four languages. Right. Today, you know, here, we're lucky if we can implement a language um, because of all the, you know, testing on these other things that, you know, ha are prioritized, you know. Right. It takes away from classroom time and learning time um, because you have to prepare for the test and administer the test and, you know. And the other thing is there's a lag on when the results are coming in. Uh, originally mm -hmm. I had heard October, but now I'm hearing December. Yeah. So we're halfway through the year before the teacher in the next grade will have the results to know uh, where Johnny stands and, and where, you know, where he needs to go and what, what needs to be worked on. Yeah, and the, and How's that helpful? And, and having, I think, you know, higher class sizes doesn't help out either, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, you know, there is a, I guess, relook at the funding formula in Massachusetts, but, um, you know, we are, as a, as a district, looking at, you know, possibly bringing litigation to, you know, have the funding that Brockton students need to have them on par with other communities. Um, you know, that might that may go forward. We're you know in the middle of exploring that um, possibility. Um, right. And you hate to take those kinds of actions, but at the same time, it's we're almost backed into a corner where we don't have a choice. If we want to yeah. provide the quality of education that our students deserve, you don't want your kids behind the eight ball. Right. We've got to force the state to fund it properly. Yeah. You know. um, what else do you want? What else you, is on your radar screen with the uh, this election and with um, the role of Ward 3 school committee person if you uh, are fortunate to be elected, which you probably will be. I hope so. Um, you know, the the other thing that's out there a lot, there's been a lot of talk, um, our superintendents talked about it a lot, is, is looking at our facilities and having a master plan for that. Um, you know, in some ways we, we put band-aids on heart attacks. Mm -hmm. And um, the only way to get out of that cycle is to come up with a plan to look at everything long term and, and what are the needs and, and, and then I think you prioritize those needs too. Yeah, if yeah. Kennedy has these needs, for example, okay, let's prioritize those as far as the things we need to do now and the things that you know, we can push down the road a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, we try to do that. Yeah. Oh, that I know you do, but, it, it's, but, it's, but it's tough. You have yeah. limited funding to do it with. Yeah. Um, well, you know, time always flies. We have about a minute. Wow. What, yeah, can you believe that? We, you know, <laughs> we just riff on. We just riff. You know? I know. That's what we do it here. Goes. Um, so, um, you know, what uh, final message would you like to basically tell the folks at home um, in terms of uh, who you are and what, uh, what you hope to achieve? Um, I think that I stick out um, amongst the other options for Ward 3 School Committee um, because I have been engaged, um, and not just since you know, this campaign season started, but for the last several years, um, I've been engaged in these, in, in educational concerns and issues in Brockton, um, you know, again with the charter school back in December, and uh, I'll be a part of that fight um, again uh, when, they, when they make their application again. Um, well, we welcome any as assistance. Absolutely. Um, as well as being engaged in the whole Common Core and Park issue and going to the state house and going to these forums to make sure that I'm educated and that I'm hearing what, what folks have to say. Um, and I think that makes me stand out against um, my, you know, my opponents that, that I'm out there and that I'm engaged and, and um, that I have a track record of, of working for um, our World Three schools. So. Great. Well, I'm so glad you came in. It's always nice having you. And well, I it's, appreciate uh, you and having it's, me. Uh, it's uh, really easy speaking with you about all these issues, you know? Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you it. for having me. Oh, no problem. Anytime.